there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a review of the Catrice Scandalous Matte Lipsticks that were released for Spring Summer 2023. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. If you're into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice reviews, and getting the use out of your makeup the way that I am, then definitely stay tuned because I think this video may be right up your street. Today we are going to be talking about 11, 11 new shades from Catrice. So they came out with this scandalous matte range for the new season. They have yet again completely overhauled their lipstick range and now we get a bunch of new mattes, which I'm not that mad about. Like in terms of what Catrice has to offer, they usually do a lot of the same things. And this line, again, like the shine bombs that we got in the fall time, do some things that we don't normally see the brand do. I mean, this sort of like purple magenta pink, it's really interesting. They haven't done a shade like that in a while. So yeah, we're kicking things off with nudes and then we go into like brighter things and then we go into the reds and then we're finishing things off with like an orangey shade. So I hope my lips aren't too stained by the time we get to the orange. And I've also been ill for most of the past week. So my lips are a little bit dry and chapped from that. I've tried my best to try and scrub them so that they're like, that it looks as nice as possible. Um, and also the day that this video goes live, if you don't want to sit through the entire video, you can also just go to the accompanying blog post where I will have, um, all of these shades swatched, uh, on my lips as well for you. So if you just want to see swatches, go to the blog post. If you want to he stay here for the ride and he'll hear the full lowdown, then that's what the video is for. So the first shade is 010, which is plain truth. And I'm so going to regret putting this on. The, oh, it, it, let me put it here, <laughs> here, <laughs> even, maybe in front of my sweater that you can see, because if I put it in front of my face, it disappears, because it's pretty much my skin tone, and I don't like nudes like this, like, if you're really into, like, that 90s, very light nude lip, this may be for you, but it's not my kind of shades. I mean, it's concealer lips waiting to happen, right? So that's what shade 010 um, Plain Truth looks like on me, not my shade. I knew that going into it. Um, I can be very short and sweet about it. Maybe I can make it work with a darker brown lip liner or something. Like this may be nice for an ombre lip, but wearing it like this full on all over your lips, my lips just disappear. And because I have a very strong, like purpley lip, purple leaning like undertone to my lips. It just looks way off and you can see every line in my lips and it's not a good look. But I don't think I'm going to fare much better with 020 nude obsession either. This, this looks like a yellow beige nude, which I think looks stunning on so many people with warm undertones. It's just not quite right for me. I'm just far too fair and far too cool toned. I think this is a great nude for people who may have more like olive leaning undertones and that are very, very deep. I think this may be really nice on you, but this again, it doesn't disappear against my skin at least, but this is not gonna look great. There we have it in a swatch. It looks a bit more brown, but you can see that yellow undertone it has, I'm sure. Let me put it on my lips. So this is what 020 Nude Obsession looks like on me. Again, not my kind of shade. With shades like this, I always feel that I look a little bit ill um, if I put them on. Like there's something not right about it. It just doesn't really go with my vibe. But I have to say that because this shade is already getting towards something that might look better on me, I do feel it's a little less obvious in terms of like accentuating dryness and like any lines I have in my lips. Um, this looks better on me because this shade is starting to blend more with what I've got going on. But this shade, not my vibe. 
030 me right now is keeping to the brown undertone, which I think is it's just very trending right now. So that's why they're doing this. I really like the way this bullet looks, by the way. I will have shown you a close up of this already, but it looks very architectural and I, they've done a really good job with this. The formula is really nice, thin, but creamy, and it does have a matte look, but it doesn't feel drying on the lips. Um, when we get to the magenta shade, I'll tell you a little bit more about wear time because I did wear that for a full day just to test out how long these would last, especially with such a bright shade. But yeah, 030, um, again, doesn't look like it's going to be right for me. A little bit too brown, but we're heading in the right direction because I feel that this does have a little bit more pink almost. We, we're seeing that we're, we're getting darker and this has a little bit more pinkiness to it. So again, a little bit better for me, probably not my favorite yet. This is what 030 me right now looks like. I feel that I'm not getting as much of the pink when it's on my lips. It still looks a bit yellow. I think this even looks more yellow toned than the one before this, actually. Hmm. But there's an edge to this. Like, I think because of the like the uh, shade of my hair, of course, I'm, I've pulled it out of my face to not have it be in the way for this, but... I think with my hair color, it kind of goes. But again, these shades, I feel I can only wear if I wear a very particular look. Um, I'm wearing something very basic and not that offensive today so that we can see all these shades going on quite well. But again, it just meshes a little bit too much with my skin tone and I don't love it for that reason. But we're heading in the right direction. This is 040 Rosy Seduction and it doesn't look that pink so it's like a warm rose which i think can be very flattering on a lot of people if you have a warm undertone i think this is going to be very universally flattering for a lot of like light medium skin people that have that warmer undertone if you're very yellow tone this will look really pretty for me it's probably a little bit too peachy coral leaning for it to be pretty but i think this is one of the very sort of you know, safe shades to have in a lipstick range like this, because I think something like this can appeal to so many people because so many people can pull it off. It's just not quite right for me. So that's what 040 Rosy Seduction. Yes, that's what it's called. That's what this looks like on. Um, it's because I have a little bit of green eyeliner on, I feel this goes with the look I've got going on today because it clashes with the green and that kind of elevates it and makes this look a lot prettier and more wearable for me. I find that with these like very stronger peachy shades, if I, as long as I wear the right eye makeup, I can pull it off, but it's not the best on me. I mean, it's prettier than I had expected perhaps because it has this white base almost. So, well, it's not neon, <laughs> not at all, but it does have a nice undertone to it, but I think this is just better for people with warmer undertones. We get 050, Sucker for Love, and here I feel we're getting something that's a little bit more unique from Catrice. Like, they're not doing a lot of standard shades that they've done a lot of times already, I feel, in this line, which is why I'm a little bit more excited for it than most more often. And this is one of the ones where I'm like, what might that look like on me? Because it seems to be red, but nude, and a little bit of pink at the same time, yet it's pretty warm. So this could be a shade that looks really stunning on me, but it could also be a shade that just clashes a little bit, little bit too much with my coloring. Um, but this could be one of the more successful ones that I would like to keep around. So here it swatches more like a medium pink, I'd say. And those are usually not my favorite shades, but I'm still really curious to see what this might look like on. I like this. I wasn't expected to like it as much. It pulls a lot more cool toned on my coloring. It seems to be one of those shades that can really transform depending on your coloring and the way everything else in your makeup looks. Um, it again goes pretty well with the green I have on my eyes. It's a little less like corally peach leaning. It definitely has more pink to it, which is why it works for me. This is very pretty for spring like this. Yes, I really like it. And what I'm also finding is that the more these shades start to appeal to me, 
the more they also like look right on my lips. I felt with some of those very light shades that we saw at the start, I had a lot of like lines in my lips and the formula looked almost off. But that's because of the shade, not, not the formula, because all these lipsticks have the same nice, thin, creamy formula that feels very comfortable on the lips, but they just look better with every shade I put on because the shade just goes better with my natural lip color. And this, I like this one. This is definitely a bit more unique for Catrice and any other lipstick line I've ever tried as well. But if we can get it do a cool tone pink, this is 060, Good Intentions. And this I'm hoping is going to be really stunning. I hope it's not too light for me because sometimes these shades, if they don't have enough like depth to them, they can look very wrong on me. But this could be a really good cool tone pink. Let's find out together. So that's what the swatch looks like, and that's what 060 Good Intentions looks like on me. I like it, but I don't love it. And let me tell you why. I feel it's just a smidgen too light for what I would want to go for, but I do think that if you're someone with very fair skin, if your lips are not naturally as pigmented as mine, and you have that very cool undertone, this is really pretty. It's a really good, cool-toned, uh, leaning pink. It's not very mauve though. I would have liked there to be a bit more warmth and have there be a bit more mauve, but this is really picking up on the purple in my lip color that I've got going on naturally. So I do think it's pretty, but I already have tons of mauve shades and I have my favorites and I don't necessarily, I feel that this is going to be perfect for me. I like the previous shade a lot better for me, but for my very cool toned uh, undertone people, especially if you have very, very fair skin, I think this is going to be a really, really good one for you. Um, so again, this is 060 Good Intentions, and I think it's actually a really good one for people with very cool undertones. But we, we know I love a good bright lip. This is 070 Go Bold or Go Home, and this is like a really good hot fuchsia looking shade. So this is another one I'm super excited for. I think again, it goes with the green I've got going on in the eyeshadow look. Look at that. Oh, I love shades like this for the spring summer season. So let me throw it on. And that's what 070 go big, go bold or go home. Yeah, go, go bold or go home looks like and oh, I love this. I do feel though that with this formula because it's Thin, two layers with these brighter shades are perhaps better to really get the opacity that you'd like. But I'm very hopeful because that means that you could also wear these like very blotted down, more like a stain if you'd like to. I'm wearing it full on here because, you know, if we were to go for a shade like this, I'm gonna wear it like this. This is stunning. I think this is going to be super great as well for people with deeper skin, especially if you have really, really dark, deep skin and you're struggling to find foundation ranges that actually do something for you. This is that kind of lipstick shade that's really going to pop and look neon on you, I think. This is going to be stunning for so many people. And bonus point, that sharp edge on the bullet, you don't need a lip line with this. You can really nicely get into all the corners of your mouth. This is such a good design. They've been doing a bullet cut like this for a while, um, but this is the sharpest one I've seen so far from Catrice and I really like um, how it's very easy to just throw these on because of it. No lip liner needed. The lip line is struggling, but we're moving on with 080, which is casually overdressed. And this I already wore in some videos and I already wore it as well to show you how the Catrice new foundation wore. So if you wanna see what this looks like after I think about 10 hours of wear, you can go to that review on my blog because this shade I already wore and it looks so purple here. But it's more like this like magenta pink with a cool undertone. Again, a really nice bright shade and I'm so glad that they're finally doing something like this again because Catrice has not done really fun bright shades for a long time. They did a lilac in the shine bombs and now they're doing this. Like compared to that pink I was just wearing, this looks straight up purple. So let me throw it on.
Can you fall in love with a lipstick? I think I just did because casually overdressed, which is 080 from this line, has to be my favorite shade here. It's so vibrant, so bright. It has this blue pink undertone. That's why it looks so purple in the swatch. But when you wear it, do you just see it's a lot more wearable than you might think? So don't be intimidated by these very bright, vibrant shades. They are so fun for the spring summer season. And again, with that hint of green on my lids, I think it's the right sort of pop. The green and the purple really elevate each other. I love lipsticks like this. And I especially like them in the winter time actually, um, because I like these like brighter, purple leaning berries almost um, for the winter season because I tend to go very cool tone and then with a very cool tone cheek. I love this. So this is, if I were to recommend just one, you want to get just one, make it this one because this is absolutely stunning. Oh, and what I should mention here as well, I referred you to that blog post where I, you can see what this looks like on. Um, so these do last, but you do need to let them settle down. So if you were to put these on and you start drinking and eating straight away, they're not gonna last. However, if you were to like leave these on, it's not gonna look perfect, of course. I mean, I never touch up lipsticks throughout the day because who's got time for that? I mean, I usually teach classes back to back. I don't have time to be touching up no lipstick. Um, but this does last, like the color will still be there. You can just pop a gloss or like a lip oil on top, rub it in and you can wear it as a bit of a stain. So these do kind of stain your lips, but not straight away. You definitely need to like apply lip balm at the start of your makeup routine, take that off, apply the lipstick and don't like eat or drink anything for like the next 30 minutes to an hour or so, and then you'll get the most wear time out of this. I'd say this wears really nice for like five to six hours. That's the point that most people I think would wanna touch this up, but it's a stunning lipstick. And then we have a really, really nice looking red. This is 090, Blame the Night. And we all know how I feel about a red. I love a good red. Um, but Catrice doesn't always do really good blue tone reds. And something is telling me that this could be a replacement for a very old matte lipstick I have from Catrice um, because this just like, look at that pigment. <sighs> I feel that like the pigmentation level of these gets better the more intense the shade is and it's easier to apply them as well. And you see fewer of the lines and this, I'm, I have high hopes for this one. So it's perhaps a bit more orange leaning than I'd hoped, but. You guys, this is such a good red lip. This is so, so yummy. This is going to be great for the summertime. I love the way this looks like. These are Catrice, so they're like, what? Five, maybe six euros at the drugstore. But these are so, so good. I really think Catrice did a killer job making these. Like. The more of these shades I'm putting on my lips, the more I love it, the more I'm like, yes, Catrice, yes. Like there's at least four shades here now that I wanna keep. I mean, like that, like, like pinky shade and then like these three as well. Like I wanna keep all of them. I wanna keep all of them. Then 100 is Muse of Inspiration. And this is like that darker red that they also have done in other lines, but again, Maybe that's the blue tone that I was hoping it to be. I hope, because the other one pulled a lot more vibrant than I had expected based on the swatch. So let me see how we fare with this. It's definitely darker, but you can see that it definitely has a different undertone as well. So this is more orange and this is a little bit more blue toned. So let me see what it, put, what it looks like on my lips. And 090 Muse of Inspiration is your classic blue toned red. It, it again doesn't look as dark on the lips as it does in the swatch, I feel. So these reds are a little bit more vibrant than you might expect from just looking at them at the bullet because 
it looks a lot brighter on. So this is your classic blue-toned red. Again, something that Catrice hasn't really done very well in a very long time. Really nice formula. Again, it looks really nice on. I have enough blue-toned classic reds to see me through, but like I mentioned, I have one from Catrice that's a couple of years old, and I think this may be a good replacement for it. Um, so I might just wanna keep that one around as well. So if you're still looking for a good classic red, this may be up your street. And then something tells me that 110 playing with fire is going to be a lot brighter as well, perhaps, than what it looks like in the bullet, because this looks like a very muted orangey peach. But could this be a bright orange once on? Who knows? Let's swatch it and find out. In the swatch, it's a little bit lackluster. I was hoping it to be to, like, just have a bit more vibrancy than it has. But who knows what it looks like on the lips. Alas, 110 playing with fire isn't as fiery orange as I'd hoped it to be. It's a little bit more of a muted peach. Again, with a warm undertone, this can look really stunning on you. So I think you could see compared to the other shades I just put on, the reds and like these like two vibrant like fuchsias and like purpley shades and also that like pinky shade that we've seen, that those just look a lot better on me and that this just doesn't work quite well. But I can guarantee you, if you have a warm undertone, this is going to look stunning on you. So those are all 11 shades of the new Catrice Scandalous Matte Lipstick Swatch Out against my fair skin tone. I think there's a little bit for everyone in this new Catrice collection for sure. I hope this video was informative and helpful for you to decide what shade you might wanna get. Um, there are definitely some shades here that I love. None of the nudes really work for my fair skin, but I definitely think in the brighter end of things, that's where this line truly came alive for me and it really shone through. Um, so thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you like to stay tuned for more. Um, I do regular lip swatches with uh, SSN Catrice products when they have new lipstick lines. So later this month, I will be swatching out all of the new Essence lipsticks for you. And in March, I'm going to be swatching out all of the new glosses that Catrice had as well. So I'm just going to spread it out a little bit over time. I can't do everything in one go. But for now, this is what these matte lipsticks look like on me. Thank you so very much for joining me and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye!